What's up, humans, and welcome to a late night psicoactivo. Happy Sunday. Well, still Sunday. I was out and about the entire weekend because it was my wife's birthday. So I had to and I wanted to disconnect for a little bit because I want to celebrate her. And it was fun. But today there were a couple of things that happened. One is a video that I'm doing tomorrow because uh, Dr. Beatriz Villarroel finally released her paper. And it happened before she said it would happen. I don't know why that was. I can understand that she was under a lot of pressure. She probably lost a lot of sleep over it. And I'm going through the paper tomorrow, uh, especially the 1952 connection to it, because I've been looking into that for months now. And the paper that she just released is directly tied to the quote unquote Mansell gap or the Mansell conspiracy, uh, which is where uh, Dr. Howard Mansell decided to stop all the uh, astronomical plate production when he was the director at Harvard's astronomy department. And when he arrived, he even uh, destroyed a lot of those plates that presumably showed a large number of objects that were there at some point and then there weren't there at some point. And then Dr. Villarroel found the same photographs from a different observatory. She just released a bunch of that research. And I will tell you exactly what startled not only her, but Dennis Asberg, who, as you guys know, released a video a few days ago, and he teased a major startling kind of revelation. Some people think it wasn't that startling. I think it was, and I'm going to explain why. But today's video is about something presumably and potentially more startling. Why? Because it has to do with a couple of interstellar objects that have traversed uh, the solar system. One of them was a Muamua, who, uh, if you guys don't remember, uh, uh, Harvard's astronomer, Dr. Abby Loeb, Professor Abby Loeb, he was the one studying a Muamua in detail. And now he released a new paper uh, this past week where some of the things that he wrote there were misinterpreted and i came here to tell you what he really said and what he really meant because this really made the news worldwide and i think it was grossly misinterpreted and grossly sensationalized and i am positive that dr abby Lowe is not happy with that so just so you guys know this is from that paper directly, and I'm going to read it to you verbatim so you guys know what Dr. Abby Loeb actually said. He said, we strongly emphasize that this paper is largely a pedagogical exercise with interesting discoveries and strange serendipities worthy of a record in the scientific literature. By far, the most likely outcome will be that 3i Atlas is a completely natural interstellar object, probably a comet. And the authors await the astronomical data to support this likely origin. Nevertheless, when viewed from an open-minded and unprejudiced perspective, these investigations have revealed many compelling insights into the possibility that 3i Atlas is technological. And moreover, the calculations presented here are useful even if the interstellar object ends up being a comet like 2i Borisov because they could be applied to the future detections of interstellar objects by the Vera C. Rubin Observatory over the coming decade. I'm going to show you what was written and by one of America's biggest tabloids because this is not a uh, you could say, respectable news outlet. Although they do make a lot of really interesting investigations, 
and they do have some really interesting journalists uh the new york post is not usually you could say level-headed they're sensational they've always been sensational and whoever wants to say otherwise just look at the history to the headlines i go just so you guys can see what the new york post does because this headline was actually repeated and parroted around the world and that is not what dr abby loeb said this headline says possibly hostile alien threat detected an unknown interstellar object a shocking new study claims that is not what professor abby loeb said and he was very clear on that paper that he was only speculating and nobody listened so he was just in one of the shows that i've watched since last year and i'm talking about the tim ventura podcast i don't cover his stuff regularly because honestly i'm a layman and tim ventura is very technical i highly respect his work he has some of the most technical scientists looking into uap and there are a bunch of times when i'm being completely honest here i try to listen to a lot of what these scientists say and i get lost easily and i'm sorry i'm i'm a little dumber than i look or maybe i do look a little dumb but that doesn't mean that i don't want to pay attention to those podcasts i do watch a bunch of tim ventura's podcasts but i get a little intimidated when i have to cover some of it and i'm glad that uh this next clip was pretty understandable because professor abby loeb was just clarifying what a lot of people misunderstood and what a lot of people misinterpreted about what he wrote in that paper so let's see what he said and shout out to tim ventura i'm gonna leave the entire podcast and that episode in the description and i would highly recommend that you guys go watch tim ventura's uh, interviews he has a really good one with maya cohen who is a uh, an anthropologist who i really respect and she's my friend uh he has one with kevin knuth he has one with the i think the desco brothers with the most technical people in UAP, Tim Ventura is your guy. So you guys got to go check him out. But this is what Professor Abby Loeb said about what was misinterpreted on his paper and what he really meant to say. So here is Professor Abby Loeb with Tim Ventura. I was uh, a co-author on a paper with um, Adam Hibbert and Adam uh, Crowell where we said um, the orbit the trajectory of this object uh, appears to be quite uh, remarkable. It uh, arrives within five degrees of the orbital plane of the Earth around the Sun. And the chance of that happening randomly is 0.2%. Mm. And moreover, it will arrive closest to the Sun when the Earth is on the opposite side of the Sun. And moreover, uh, if you just uh, play with the arrival time randomly, uh, you would notice that only one out of 20,000 arrival times would come as close to the inner planets like uh, Jupiter, uh, Mars, or Venus. So that that is an unusual coincidence. And why would such a trajectory be so unusual? Well, one possibility is if it was designed by some intelligent civilization, uh, it also comes towards us from the direction of the galactic center from this interstellar object is way bigger than a more more and uh, the guys at event horizon have done tremendous work studying this object and talking about it and uh breaking it down for lay people uh, and yeah it does have a lot of really strange characteristics that make someone like professor abby loeb talk about this but that does not mean that he actually thinks this is like an alien craft that is heading our way. This was like taken completely out of context. His words and what he wrote was taken completely out of context in order to get a sensational type of headline and make the news worldwide. 
And I think that was a gross mistake by anybody who picked this up. This is what he really said. And it is kind of startling, though. But he's not saying, oh, there's a massive craft heading our way and we're going to be invaded. He didn't say any of that. And that's what I read in most of the headlines. And now that he's talking about this himself, this is how I covered this story. Because I really wasn't liking all those headlines that I saw about his work. The, the Milky Way Center, where there are lots of stars and it's very difficult to notice it. That's why we discovered it so late. Uh, by now, it's impossible for us to launch a rocket that will intercept with it because it would move relative to Earth. It comes in the opposite direction uh, of the motion of Earth around the sun, and the relative velocity would be 98 kilometers per second when it comes closest to the sun. And that is three times the maximum speed that we can accomplish with chemical rockets. And so there is no way for us to reach it, to intercept with it, and perhaps it wants to break, you know, like when we uh, launch um, rockets and we want to accomplish a very high speed, we usually uh, uh, introduce a thrust uh, near the sun. And that's that buys you the highest uh, kick velocity, taking advantage of the gravitational assist by the sun. And so if this object wants to do a, a reverse maneuver, meaning to slow down and get bound to the sun so that it, uh, it if it's a spacecraft so that they can visit us, uh, that would be the point where we can't see it because it's hiding behind the sun. And, uh, you know, it raises the interesting possibility that might be technological in origin. So, yeah, I do want to say something uh, about Dr. Abby Loeb that I want to applaud how he thinks outside of the box and him thinking outside of the box is what is leading for whatever he says to be taken out of context but him thinking outside of the box does not mean that he thinks whatever he's saying is going to happen it means that he is exploring the different types of possibilities of whatever he's studying at that moment and that's just what's happening and not very many astronomers or scientists dare to do this, what Professor Abby Loeb is doing with this Atlas uh, interstellar object. And I do think that um, the more vitriol and the more judgment that falls upon people like Professor Abby Loeb, the less they are going to be willing to talk about this and to explore this and to speculate safely speculate because they are going to know that whatever they say is going to just be used against them and it's just going to be taken out of context and i know that it must be really frustrating for him whenever something like this comes up and he wants to talk about it through a paper how people play broken telephone essentially with his words i think that's extremely unfortunate and kind of gross if you ask me of course, we will know much more in the coming month or two, and it may not be, it may be just a comet, but I think it's important to consider the possibility that any interstellar object coming in to the solar system might be technological, because if you just consider the last century, you know, we started transmitting radio signals, basically flagging that we exist as a technological civilization, and uh, there is this dark forest hypothesis that is the answer to Fermi's paradox, where is everybody? Well, they might be silent, waiting uh, to, to, to notice things that might be threat, a threat to them because they were bruised in interactions. So there might be a lot of aliens around. And uh, if someone was listening to our technological signals, uh, you know, they might have realize that here there is a, a young technological civilization and we don't want to have that threat. So they would send uh, a hostile a mission towards Earth. Um, of course, that may not be the case. We don't know. But um, it's uh, the kind of threat that is not often entertained. So he used the Black Forest hypothesis and he used the term hostile at the end. Again, he's only speculating. 
he said it himself at the end there. He thinks that it may not happen at all. But uh, this really ties into what Dr. Beatriz Villarroel just released in her paper. I'm going to leave the link in the description for her paper. The only reason I'm not doing a video today about her is because I was out uh, on my weekend and because I, I am trying to get a quote from Dr. Villarroel about this. And uh, presumably also, if it happens, I hope she's on the show soon. But yeah, this, uh, whatever Professor Abby Loeb is talking about here, does kind of connect with uh, Dr. Beatriz Villarroel's uh, research. But I want to hear from you guys. What do you think about the way in which uh, Professor Abby Loeb's uh, words and work was taken out of context and sensationalized? Do you think uh, this can discourage many of these scientists to keep uh, doing work? Because it kind of adds to the stigma, in my opinion. And I think it was a terrible mistake. Not just the New York Post did this. Pretty much everybody did this. And I think that people should really read into what scientists like Professor Abby Loeb write before you guys make an opinion about it. Because this is not helping, guys. This is just adding to the stigma. It's not taking it out. We need to learn how to properly interpret whatever scientists write. And also, that's another reason why I'm taking a little longer to talk about whatever Dr. Villarroel's uh, paper is about, because the language from a scientist is not the same as the language from a lay person. It's more difficult, and it's more difficult to understand, and it takes a little longer to process for us. But let me know what you think about this entire Professor Abby Loeb saga in the Atlas interstellar object let me know what you think about what he said with tim ventura and what do you think about his overall paper what do you think about his hypothesis what do you think about the dark forest hypothesis let me know in the comments if you like the content you see i'm gonna ask you to like share comment subscribe and hit the bell icon that's all you need to do in order to help us and it is what helps us the most so thank you but if you want to support us in any other way, there's a few links down there you can choose from. You can support us through KGRA, or you can become a member on YouTube. Anything you choose to do is always appreciated, so thank you. That's it for me today on this video, but I'll see you guys in the next one. Remember, stay curious and inquisitive like Professor Abby Lowe. Always. Bye.